Here's what the bank does with your money. In this episode, I'm going to answer the question, where is a safer place than a bank to put money? You're going to be shocked when I tell you the answer, but you can dramatically increase your rate of return and the safety when you reposition your serious cash to these institutions. So my name's Doug Andrew. I've been a financial strategist, a retirement planning specialist primarily for more than four and a half decades. Thank you for clicking on this episode. I would recommend that you subscribe to this channel if you like to get a financial education and empower yourself and click like as you go. I want to help you understand there are far safer places to put serious cash. This is money that you have earmarked maybe for goals like retirement or college funding for your children or grandchildren, uh, maybe real estate investing and so forth to have greater safety and more rates of return or higher rates of return than what banks pay. So get ready. I'm going to share with you some things that most people don't understand or even think about. And I'm going to share with you where your bank puts your money when you deposit your money in their institution. So first of all, let's talk about rating agencies. There's several uh, agencies out there like S and P standard and Poor's that rates different financial institutions. You also have others that do that Fitch and Moody's and Weiss and so forth. And so they usually will assign a rating to a financial institution based upon several things, but they want to make sure that institution manages money. Well, they have liquidity. Uh, they invest in safe investments. They don't put it out in a bunch of junk bonds and things like that. And so most banks in America probably end up with about a triple B rating, some higher, some lower uh, with S and P. So if your bank has a triple B rating, that's good. Okay. But what a lot of people don't realize is your bank takes your money and oft times repositions it into institutions that have triple A rating, AAA. And they say, Hmm, is that just one notch higher? No, it's actually six notches higher because you go from triple B up to the B pluses and then the A minuses and then the single A, double A and triple A. I'm going to share with you that many, many banks in order to have liquidity and safety on their tier one assets. Now what's a tier one asset? That's money that banks must have on hand liquid and safe in order to get it quickly in case of a disaster, a run on their bank. And they will put 30 to 40% of that into legal reserve insurance companies that are rated double A, triple A, hence increasing the safety of that money even higher than their bank up to double A and triple A. So they're increasing the safety and they're increasing their rate of return. Now, do you know that many insurance companies based upon their favorite investment, one of them is called BOLI, B-O-L-I. It's an acronym that stands for bank owned life insurance. And people go, what? Banks own life insurance? Yep. On who? Well, you can't put life insurance on a bank. Okay. Uh, a corporation never really dies unless it goes uh, out of business. They buy life insurance on people. It's the owner of the insurance policy that gets all the tax free accumulation inside of a living benefit designed insurance policy. See, I use life insurance for living benefits. This is where I maximum funded. I take the least amount of insurance the IRS will let me get away with. And I put in the most money as fast as the IRS allows and it creates a tax free cash cow. I have actually earned rates of return averaging between eight to 10% for the last 45 years where I earn a tax free rate of return. My money doubles every seven to 10 years tax free. Now let's just conservatively use 5% 
because a lot of legal reserve insurance companies recently on their general account portfolios have been earning four, five, six percent. So what is the bank doing with your money? You see, there's four things you can do with money. You can spend it, lend it, own with it, or give it away. When you put your money in a bank, a credit union, or even an insurance company, it's in a lended position. Are they just a benevolent institution paying you interest and they put your money in a vault? No, they loan it back out again, but they take their tier one assets, money they have to have on hand, liquid and safe, and they turn around and they increase the safety by putting it into insurance companies and they increase their rate of return by five times. See, 5% is five times 1%. So what are they doing? Every million that we put in the bank collectively, okay, they pay 10,000 a year in interest, but they make 50,000 a year where they put it in an insurance company. That is five times, that's a 500% return and they increase the safety. Part of the message here is you can bypass the middleman with your serious cash, you can put it into an insurance company and increase the liquidity. You can access your money. You don't need a drive up window. You can do it in this day and age with an electronic funds transfer or phone call. You can increase the liquidity, the safety and the rate of return, and you can convert it to tax free. So I use what I call the laser fund as my laser bank and I bypass the banks. It's a safer place to put money. So let me give you some examples of this. So what about FDIC, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation? A lot of people think, well, my money's safe in the bank because it's federally insured. True, uh, when the Great Depression hit and so forth, there was a huge run on the banks and banks closed. 40% never reopened their doors. Did you know that? But this is when FDIC came in and said, you know, so that people will have um, sort of a, a feeling of safety that the federal government will back up their deposit. We will insure deposits up to a certain amount in a bank. And so people don't panic. They don't run to the bank. Way back then, if uh, there was a run on the bank, the bank could just call your mortgage due. They can't do that anymore. So what do they do with your money? They don't just put it in, in the vault. Hello, they put it back to work. Now, banks could actually invest and uh, make a good rate of return, but in order to help you out, they loan money to you if you wanna build a house or buy a car or whatever, even though there's a little bit of risk involved because if they loan money to you, you will likely loan it back to them by depositing the money in their bank. So. I'm going to explain to you the velocity of money, but FDIC sort of insures, but see, there's times when FDIC has technically been broke. Did you know that? When the savings and loans got into trouble, FSLIC ran out of money and FDIC had to come in and it really put a strain on that. But see, the federal government has the ability to tax us, raise taxes. Uh, they can print money temporarily. And so most people say, you know what? I, I, I'm comfortable with my money in the bank because it's federally insured. But what about the rate of return? It's pathetic. You're rowing upstream, so to speak, at the rate of one mile an hour, and the current of inflation is coming down at three, four, five. You're going backwards. So I would recommend that you don't have any more money in the bank than maybe up to six months worth of the basics to live and have the rest of your money, even emergency funds, where the banks are putting your money and earning higher rates of return and increasing the safety. So the legal reserve insurance industry is the backbone of America and the backbone of the world, by the way. If you go back historically to the Great Depression, uh, banks closed their doors, 40% never reopened. Uh, guess how many legal reserve insurance companies went under in the Great Depression? Zero. They came through paying two, two and a half, three, three and a half percent interest during that time period. Now, legal reserve means insurance companies have to have on hand reserves. So if there's a run on the financial institutions, they have their wherewithal. They don't put money out in, in a bunch of loans on skyscrapers and shopping malls at 80% loan to value. If they loan money on a skyscraper, it's more like 50% loan to value. So if they have to foreclose, they come out making a profit, okay? They might put money in AAA and AA bonds, but they have money liquid and safe. 
And so this is why banks will take money and put it into the insurance companies because they know it's liquid and safe there. They're making five times. They borrow our money at one, they turn around and make five. So people say, well, then why would a bank or a credit union ever want to loan me money and charge me just five or 6% for my house to build my house or a mortgage? I'm not near as safe as these big multi-billion and multi-trillion dollar insurance companies. It's because of the velocity of money. Get ready, I'm gonna blow you away. Let's say I'm gonna build a house and I need to go get a construction loan that's gonna convert into a long-term mortgage. So I go to the bank and I'm gonna borrow a million dollars. So they give me the loan, what do I do with the million? I give it to the general contractor to build my house. What does the general contractor do with that money? He pays the subcontractors and the suppliers and has a profit. And what do all of them do with that million? They loan it back to the bank at 1%. Most of these institutions, most of these businesses, they park their money in the bank. They run their business out of checking accounts. They put money in savings. So they're loaning the money back to the bank at one. The bank loans it back out again at five or six. They get it back at one, loan it back at five. Guess how many times a year? 17 times a year do they churn that. They're making 500% 17 times a year on the same money. That's called the velocity of money. Now, they can't do that on all the money. That's why they put their tier one assets in to insurance companies where they earn five times often more than what they're paying you when they borrow your money. So what does all this mean? You can bypass the middleman with your serious cash and put your money where banks are putting your money to increase safety, liquidity, and increase your rate of return, and you can have it be tax-free. So let me show you how you can learn more about this phenomenal repository, which I call the Laser Fund. So as a financial strategist for four and a half decades, my favorite vehicle by far that passes the liquidity safety rate of return test with flying colors and it's tax free to boot is what I call the laser fund. That's what these pillars mean. Liquidity, safety, rate of return and tax benefits. In this book, you can put any investment to the test and see where it scores on a scale of one to 10 out of a possible 40 the laser fund scores 33 to 35. Nothing else comes close. Banks might score high on safety, uh, not as safe as insurance companies do. Rate of return is pathetic, okay? Uh, liquidity, yeah, the bank has a drive up window. But see, most places where people put money might only rank about 18 to 22 points out of a possible 40. The laser fund scores 33 to 35. Nothing else comes close. If you want to study why and how, claim your free copy. Go to laserfund, L-A-S-E-R, fund.com, and uh, you contribute a nominal amount towards the shipping and handling. I'll cover the rest of that, and I will pay for the book, send it out to you. This has 200 pages with all kinds of charts and graphs. This one, yep, it's two books in one. This one has about 100 pages, 12 chapters, with 62 actual stories. I want to empower you, and when you read this, you'll understand how the Laser Fund is like the dream solution for all kinds of goals, but it's a way safer place, in my opinion, than putting your money in the bank and then having the bank take some of that money and put it here. Just put it here in the first place.